Hey, this is Joe with Grow a Build, and today we're going to talk about hot composting with weed seeds, seed heads, and whether or not you got to worry about a fire. All right, I've made a couple of videos on composting, and I get a lot of comments on those. A couple of questions that are recurring is whether you can add weeds or use be worried about the weed seeds germinating. So I'm going to address that in this video, as well as talk about a couple other heat-related topics on composting, like fires and such. So I hope you stick around to watch, and let's dive into it. All right, so if you are watching this, I'm going to assume that you have a pretty good idea of what composting is, at least from a high level. So we'll go right into what we gotta worry about with weed seeds, or any seed for that matter. And the basic question is, do you need to be worried about those seeds germinating in your finished compost later on? The short answer is, it depends on how hot your pile gets. If you are able to build a hot compost pile, then odds are pretty good that the seed will not survive the composting process. And I'm gonna go into a lot of detail about that in just a minute. But know that it, compost that never gets too hot, say if your pile never gets above 108 Fahrenheit 42C, then it's probably not going to kill any weed seeds. If you practice what is known as cold composting or lazy composting, where you just pile stuff up and come back in six months, you should probably avoid adding anything with seeds, in particular weeds, because you may have to deal with a lot of germination later on. Now, you can probably guess that it's perfectly okay to compost with weeds as long as you remove the seed heads. If there's no seeds that go into a cold compost pile, then there's no seeds to germinate later on, so that's perfectly fine. However, if you are going to be making a hot pile, then whether or not you need to worry about weed seeds depends on how hot your pile gets and for how long it can maintain those temperatures. In short, in a moist environment, seeds can be killed by high temperatures. They have to be exposed for a long enough period of time, and as you might expect, the higher the temperature, the shorter amount of time needed to kill any seed. The temperature and duration of exposure for seed death varies with each species. But as a general rule, if your pile can reach 130 Fahrenheit, 54 Celsius, for at least a week, then most seeds will be rendered non-viable. If you can reach 140 Fahrenheit, which, or 60 Celsius, and a seed is exposed to that, then most seeds will be killed in just a matter of a few hours for, for the vast majority of species that have been studied. Now, we can contrast that with a pile that only gets, say, 95 Fahrenheit 35 seed. While some species, such as white clover, will be killed at those temperatures after a couple of months, others, such as black nightshade, they're going to be completely unaffected. So, where is this information coming from? Well, there's been a number of studies analyzing the effectiveness on high temperatures to kill weed seeds. I summarize a large number of these studies at an article on my website, which I will link to below. And if you are interested in the nitty gritty details, I strongly suggest you go there and check it out with all the tables and graphs and such. And I list all my references at the bottom. But I find these studies very interesting. A few examples of what they did would be this study from Japan in 1998, where they fed cows a certain diet, of which a portion of it was various species of weed seed. They then recovered the seeds from the manure, so they'd already been digested, and then composted them at controlled temperatures in incubation tubes for 7 to 25 days. They found that the seeds were still viable and could be germinated unless the temperatures were able to hit 46 Celsius. To quote them, Thereafter, a rapid decline of germinable speeds and none of the species germinated after 57 Celsius, which is 115 Fahrenheit and then 135 Fahrenheit, respectively. Another study from 2007 found that the time required to kill 100% of the seeds for various species. And what they did is they found that if your pile could reach 140 Fahrenheit, 60 Celsius, it could kill them all in as little as three hours. But if you never got above 102 Fahrenheit, then most of these same species would be unaffected. Their data showed that seed mortality has a non-linear response in comparison to time and temperature. And if you guys are enjoying this content, please click the like button as that really helps me out and I do greatly appreciate it. There was a very in-depth study analyzing seed death for eight common weed species at various temperatures for up to seven days. This study did something a bit unique in that it first tested if the seeds were killed by temperature alone in a dry medium. They found that in dry soil, temperatures of 122 Fahrenheit, 50 Celsius, didn't kill the seeds. And they found that in dry soil, they had to go all the way up to 158 Fahrenheit, 70 Celsius to kill some. And even then, some species still weren't harmed. So they had to repeat their experiment in a moist medium. They found that the high temperatures combined with moisture would kill the seeds. And here's some of their data. 
Most species experienced a significant death rate when heated up to at least 122 Fahrenheit for five to seven days. And nearly all species had 90 to 100% seed mortality when they reached 140 Fahrenheit for seven days. Now, if you're someone who likes to look at lots of charts and data and see the studies, I will put a link to my website down below and you can go there to see all these charts and more. Or you could just Google grow it, build it, hot compost weed seeds and you'll find it right away. So what can we take from all this? Well, high temperature compost piles will render most weed seeds dead. The other interesting caveat is that some of the studies where they actually tried to compost the seeds, in those results, they found they could kill the seeds at lower temperatures than if they were just mixed in regular soil and heated up to the same temperatures. So does that mean that in a compost pile, the microbes that start becoming activated at higher temperatures are better at you know, decomposing the seed coat or softening it? Or for the cow manure studies, does it mean that the digestion makes it more likely or easier for the seed to be killed at higher temperatures? I mean, these are valid questions, but difficult to answer. The main point for a backyard composter is that if you can make a hot compost pile that can hit 130 Fahrenheit and maintain it for a week, you know, you can pretty much guarantee that your weed seeds will be probably all dead, a minimal risk of them surviving the composting process. Now, I do need to point out that seeds need to reach high temperatures to die and if they're only existing on the periphery of your pile and never get mixed into a hot part, they may survive. It also happens that sometimes they will just germinate when they're on the warm part of your pile, but not the hot part. And you can see this here. This looks like a couple of pumpkins germinated in one of my winter piles this year. This really isn't a big deal as they'll just get killed when you eventually turn your pile, but it, it's, it can happen. But regarding seeds in your compost, the key point is you need to get that pile hot and you've got nothing to worry about. The main concern would be if you used a lot of yard waste or brush that contained thousands and thousands of seeds and that those seeds survived the composting process because it didn't get hot enough and thus your vegetable garden turned into a goldenrod field or something like that. Once you've built a couple of compost piles, you'll gain the experience and confidence to know how to adjust the temperature by the materials and the size. And you'll know when it's safe to add weeds with seeds or spent flowers or whatnot to a pile. And to show you I mean business, I mean, here's a big pile of Japanese stilt grass with seed heads on it. Some of those seed heads definitely weren't formed yet, but some were. And I composted it. And I knew that I was going to be able to get really hot temperatures, and I was confident I could kill them all, and I never had any germinate. So, there you go. We're talking about compost piles getting really hot. And one question that does get asked periodically is whether we should be concerned with fire. I'm going to make a future video on this subject, but let me just state that spontaneous combustion of a compost pile is absolutely possible. First, large commercial compost facilities occasionally will have their piles catch on fire. Just Google it. You'll find news stories reporting on it. The second is that large hay bales or square bales that are stacked too close together can also catch fire if the hay was baled while it was wet or green. The size of these piles is huge, you know, it, much larger than a regular backyard pile, which is normally three to four feet diameter. Spontaneous combustion can happen due to steep temperature rises that are driven by oxidizing chemical reactions, normally in plant material. These oxidation reactions will occur throughout the composting process, but they really start increasing as with the temperature. Generally, it's thought that the internal temperature of a pile where it begins to run away is around 175 to 195 Fahrenheit or 80 to 90 Celsius. That's when it can take over. For reference, I've never had any pile I've built go above 152 Fahrenheit. Backyard compost piles are primarily driven by bacteria, which stop generating heat at roughly 160 Fahrenheit. The oxidizing chemical reactions still occur at this temperature, but they're not as intense and the heat can easily escape. A larger pile will lose less heat due to less surface area relative to its volume. And that is what results in potential runaway heat generation as the temperature continues to rise, which gives feedback to the chemical reaction to go even faster. Once the internal temperature of a pile reaches somewhere around 300 to 400 Fahrenheit or 150 to 200 C, spontaneous combustion may occur. So briefly, and please pay attention to this, to prevent fire from occurring in your backyard compost pile, you should monitor the temperature using a proper compost thermometer. It costs around 20 bucks. If the internal temperature is approaching 155, 160 Fahrenheit, which is roughly 68 Celsius, then you should separate the pile into two smaller piles. Also ensure your pile stays evenly moist as moist material will be more effective at conducting heat to the outside than the material that is less moist. 
In regards to compass thermometers, I will put a link to the one I use below in the description. It works great. Okay, time to review. A hot compost pile will generally kill any weed seeds provided that it reaches a temperature of 120 to 140 Fahrenheit for at least a week. The higher the temperature, the shorter time required to kill seeds. Mixing the pile should ensure that all material cycles through the center to help ensure that all seeds experience those high temperatures required to kill the seeds. If you are cold composting, you should remove seed heads to ensure no unwanted seeds germinate in the finished compost later on. And to prevent compost fires, monitor the internal temperatures of your piles and make sure it doesn't go above 160 Fahrenheit or 70 Celsius. Also, keep your piles to four foot diameter. You know, I mean, you can make it bigger in the winter, but just the main thing is to take responsibility for your compost pile and monitor the temperature. All right, so that's all I've got for you guys today. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Also, let me know how hot your compost piles have gotten in the past or if you had any cool stories about that. It is fun to read and I believe the other people who watch this video would appreciate hearing your story. And if you guys are enjoying this video, please click the thumbs up as that really helps me out and I do greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, you guys all have a good one.